I'm going to show you how to get multiple characters talking to each other in the same scene with stunning lip syncing and also how you can create any character with perfect consistency, create incredible animations with the best AI video generators. You can do this plus much more all in one program. It will help take your characters and storytelling to the next level. Okay, let's get into it. So in this video, I'll be using Design, which is an all-in-one platform where you can take your ideas from a concept into a finished product without ever having to leave the site. This is incredibly powerful as you won't need to have multiple subscriptions. And like I said in the intro, you have access to all of the top AI video generators. What I'm really loving is the new multiple lip sync feature, which I've been testing out a ton and I'll show you all of my results shortly. But to start off with, we need to create our characters. So I'll quickly show you how to do it. Creating a consistent character in design is extremely easy. Just go to consistent character, or if you're on this page, just click on build your character. What's great is that you have quick mode and training mode. So with quick mode, all you have to do is add one image of your character, and then you can use that as a model. But if you do want better results, then the training mode is the way to go. So I'll quickly show you both modes. In quick mode, you can either add in a description. So you just give it a name, the description of what your character looks like. Then you can choose a style for your character. And design have loads of different options which you can choose from. So you can go from like Pixar 3D style to realistic to anime style and cartoon. You can choose whatever style you want your character to look like. Or you can start with an image. So you just give it a name, drag and drop your image into here. So I'm gonna try my image of a wizard and then you just start building. And with the training mode, you can either start with a description or start with images. If you don't have images of your character, then you can start with a description. So I've just gone for a very simple description of a boy with short green hair wearing explorer outfit and backpack. And I'll go for this kind of Pixar CGI style. And you can add a face reference if you want to. I would say this is probably worth trying on a more realistic style model. And just click on generate character. Then it generates two previews for you. So you can choose which one you prefer to then start training. And you can regenerate if you don't like any of them. Okay, so I quite like this one here. So I'll click to choose and then you can start training for 30 credits. Now let's have a look at training mode, but with using images. So it's best to use one to 30 images of your character for it to train on. This will take a bit longer to create this character, but it will be of a high quality. I've actually already created this cat-like character and generated loads of different poses and facial expressions. So now I can upload these images into design so it can train my character. Now I've trained my characters. If I click on the character page, then manage your characters. So I've got my wizard character here. As you can see, this one has the quick label. It just shows you which characters were made using the quick model. I have my Jack character here and then my cat character here, which I called Bobby. If you're worried that you don't have any images of any characters, then you can use their text to image tool or use the character sheet to generate images. I've also created a free document containing two different characters, which you can find in the description below. So you can use these images to then start training a character if you don't have any characters to start with. Now I'll test out generating images with the characters I've created. So I've picked my wizard character, which was created using the quick method. So these results should still be good, but won't be as good as the more advanced trained characters. So I've put in wizard close up view walking through a forest and I'll pick the 16 by nine aspect ratio. And I'm pretty happy with the results. And as you can see over here, you get loads of options to edit your image as well. So I'm actually gonna enhance this image. So you can choose it from upscale to enhance. So here's the upscaled image versus the original. And as you can see, it's added in a bit more detail. Now let's see some of the results from using my advanced trained character. So up here, it will show your character and the look of your character. And down here is what you want the character to do. If you do want to change how your character looks like with wearing different clothing, then make those edits up in this section here. So I could delete the wearing a gray tank top and I could say he's wearing a black jacket. And the great thing is it will still look like the character, but it will change the clothing. So for the action, I've put Bobby is hiking up a mountain and holding a map. He looks confused. And then we get some more settings to really dial in your image. 
So with camera, you can either leave these on auto and design will kind of pick what's best for you, or you can choose the stance of your character. So if you want them facing backwards, left, right, front, you can do close up, upper body, full body, wide shot. So for this one, I'll do upper body and I'll do front view. You can also use the pose mode and the reference mode to control how your character looks. So in pose mode, it is in beta. As long as your character has a human-like body, you can readjust these points just to make sure everything matches. And and then go to edit pose and you can choose some of the pre-selected poses they have in their library. So as I click on one, you'll see the pose updates and then you can drag around the camera and then click on save. It will show you the pose in this window here and if you want you can adjust it here as well. And as you can see it copies that pose into the final image. And for reference mode you can upload your own reference image to influence the output. And here you can even change the style of your character again. But I'm going to stick with my original one that I picked. And I'll choose high quality. And let's see how it turned out. And the image looks awesome. It looks exactly like my character and it's followed the prompt exactly. So now let's have a look at using lip sync with your characters. So from your generations, you can actually access lip sync from below it, or you can come over here, click lip sync, and you can either pick a face image or a face video. So I'll be using the pro mode, which you can only use with the face image at the moment, and I'll select an image, then it will automatically detect a face. So make sure to select it. If it doesn't detect a face, then you can mark the face manually. So you can either use text-to-speech or you can upload your own audio. With text-to-speech, you can preview the voices here that they have. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. And just type in what you want the character to say. So I've just added in a bit of text. You can also choose if you want it a bit slower or faster. So I'll choose a bit slower, then just click apply, and you'll see it will add that audio underneath the image. And then just click generate. So here's a quick lip sync of my cat character who got lost on the mountain. Oh no, I'm totally lost. Which way should I go now? That just shows you it works really well with non-human looking characters. So for this example, I'm using an image of a wizard and his apprentice. When using the pro mode with an image, you can lip sync up to two people in the same scene. So it's detected their faces, so I'll just click on them. And then down here, you can see it's separated the speakers, so we can add in individual voices for each character. For this one, I've already created some audio for them, so I'm going to upload some files. So as you can see, I've added in the audio for each character, but at the moment they are overlapping. So you can actually move this audio around. You can choose to trim it as well. And what I really like is that you can add extra audio to each track as well. So I want to create a back and forth conversation between the two characters. If you hover your mouse over the audio track, you can add more audio. So I'll upload a couple more audio tracks for each character. So as you can see, I've added in a couple more tracks and then you can move these around to choose which character speaks and when. So here's the finished video. Master, it says this spell tears open the sky. Relax. Last time I bent reality, we only lost two sheep. Three. One came back as a feathered goat. Tastiest barbecue we ever had. What's great is that now we can have multiple characters having a natural conversation within the same scene. So here's more examples of videos I've created with multiple lip syncs. Yeah, so this film is really boring, actually. I know, right? Um, should we just finish this popcorn and get out of here? In the shadow of the mountains where the river's run bold We gather around the fire with tales of old Brothers of the hammer, warriors of the night With a sword in our hearts, we'll conquer the fight It even works really well with side profiles of faces, as you can see in this video. My people, we stand not as individuals, but as one. The roads ahead will test us. Together, we are unbreakable. What's great about design is that they give you all of the top AI video generators to use. So if you click on AI video, click on video model, they've got everything from Kling to Seedance to VO3, Minimax, One, Luma. It really does have all of the best models available, which is great as you get to pick and choose which ones you want to use. I like to create videos to then complement my lip syncing videos to create a more fleshed out story. So I'll show you a quick example. I've got my wizard and apprentice characters and I've created some images for a sequence for them. For this one, I've selected Kling 2.1 Pro. 
I'll upload my image into here, and for the prompt I've put in zoom in slowly as the character walks. And with Kling 2.1 Pro, they now have an end frame if you want to use that as well. I'm going to leave the imagination in the middle there, and another great feature is that you get to add sound effects as well. So in the sound effects prompt box, I've put in forest sounds. As the character is walking through the forest, hopefully it should make it sound a bit more immersive. And the video looks great. And the sound effects work perfectly with the video. And here's an example of using Kling AI's start and end frames. So I'm going to do the same thing with all of my extra shots. And I even created a title sequence using Veo3. So for my title prompt, I used a cinematic title sequence with the title The Wizard and the Apprentice on a spellbook in a Harry Potter style font. And I'm blown away with the video it created. So I've got all of the videos for my sequence, as well as the lip sync video we created earlier. So I've edited them together, I've added a bit of background music, and this is the result. The Wizard and the Apprentice. I can't wait to see what I'll be learning today. After a long journey, the Apprentice finally makes it to the castle. Ah, there he is, late as usual. So, what kind of awesome spell are we conjuring today? Don't you worry. I've got something quite special in store for you. Master, it says this spell tears open the sky. Relax. Last time I bent reality, we only lost two sheep. Three. One came back as a feathered goat. Tastiest barbecue we ever had. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. I think it's a really good technique blending in AI video shots along with the character lip sync shots. Definitely try out this method to flesh out your stories. I want to show you a few more really cool tools that design have. So we have Instant Storyboard. So with Instant Storyboard, you can add characters, objects, and environments into these three panels here, and then the final shot will combine them together. So you just click on it, and then you can choose your characters or drop in an image. So for this one, I've added three different characters into it along with this prompt, and the image looks great. This is a really good tool if you want to mix different elements together. Another great tool is the Insert Character feature. So I've got the image of my wizard here, and let's say I want to add a character into the scene with him. So I'll use this lasso tool here, and I'll just draw around here, and I can choose a character, and I'll put Bobby the cat in there. So I've put Bobby is scratching his head while looking at the wizard. And you can choose the different view of your character as well. I'll just leave this one on auto. And it's added Bobby into the picture perfectly. And I also added in another character as well. This is definitely a really good tool if you want to make select edits and add characters into scenes. If you're interested in trying out design, I've left a link to it in the description down below. And these are the plans that you can choose from. I've been using the creator plan, which I think is a really approachable price at $19.99 a month. And it comes with a ton of features, including all of the ones I've used in this video. So if you're interested, definitely have a look or even just try it for a month to see if you like it or not. So this is the end of the video, and I have to say I'm really impressed with how much design have added into this site. It really is an all-in-one package, especially if you're wanting to create characters and AI videos. If you have any comments about this video, then please leave them below. It would be awesome if you could like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jack, and I will see you in the next one.